Jordan's a very happy-go-lucky kid. He has the biggest smile. He's playful, and he is just a joy for me to be around. My ex-husband is from a family of six, I'm from a family of 10, so we have a huge family. And Jordan was the only one that we knew of that's ever been diagnosed with autism. We didn't know what to do. You don't want to face it, you just keep thinking he'll catch up. And so uh, it became the journey of what we had to learn about autism. Jordan doesn't really have a sleeping schedule. There's some nights like last night where he was up from probably 12 to 2.30 and I made him go to bed and then, so now he's sleeping in. So there's some weeks where I have two or three days in a row where I'm like two hours here, two hours here, sleep, cat naps on the couch. Good morning. Sleepy head. You want a few minutes on the computer before we get dressed? Good. He's like a gigantic toddler. Jordan. Hey, do you want cheese? No, put so much in your mouth. Stop, stop, you're gonna choke. For me, it's just trying to keep up and some days I just have to call Mark and say, he's been up for two days, I really need you to take him. Jordan. I play a major part in George's life. Mm. He's tired. And that piece hasn't changed. He loves to be around his dad because he has a big hearty laugh and he loves big men with big hearty laughs. He's definitely a man's man. Jordan does not type, so he does everything with the mouse. When it comes to the computer, he does some amazing things that I'm like, how did you find that? You dancing like you breathe. Like this morning, he played a gospel song that he's never played before. Tell him that's some things that God's getting ready to do for you. What we heard when he was first diagnosed was he'll never drive, he'll never go to school, he'll never, 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 never. It was all these nevers. And I just remember looking at the evaluator and thinking, how do you know? How do you know what he's going to do? And I still think that because he's very smart and he learns every day. Oh, good choice. He definitely does way more at school than he does at home. One day I came back and he was on the computer and this was my new screensaver. Autism speaks. <laughs> He does a lot of wonderful things that the teacher tells Patty and I. He hears everything, he understands everything. I have no doubt in my mind. He loves his sister to death. Yeah, there's the Jordan. Hey, hey, hey. The he will aggravate her to no end. Why are you smiling? And yet can't go for two minutes without looking at her or trying to get her attention. She's accepted the role as big sister, little sister. There are times that Nicole will want to just go and hang out with her dad or I'll go on a trip with her for basketball just so she has time with us apart from Jordan. Finally, after all these years, we're accepting that Jordan is the blessing that he is. It takes a long time to kind of sit back and say, this is probably going to be his life. He's going to need lifelong support. Patty and I have to make a big decision on what's the next step for Jordan. And so I try not to think about what the next step is because it's very hard. At 21, Jordan will stop receiving services through the education system. So that's what they call falling off the cliff is at 21 it just stops as if he doesn't need services anymore. It scares me to leave him here without me. You coming? I don't know if I'm certainly going to outlive Jordan, but if I don't, I certainly would like to have a peace of mind that he's going to be taken care of and he's going to be loved and he's going to be supported. And I think that's what's really scary for us is who's going to do that? Who's going to love him as much as we do? Because I want him to be as independent as he can. And that's why I continue to raise money for Autism Speaks because I think he can have a full life. I think he can do all kinds of things with help. <laughs>